So hi guys, Alan from $50 Film School here. Um, just great to be able to sit out in the garden and enjoy my sports direct ah, cup of tea. That's how heavy that is. Look, you know, whenever I lift the mug up, it actually causes a minor tilt shift in the Earth's uh, axis. So let's, let's see. Yeah, that's called it. That's called a Shatner rule, by the way. Look, there we go. That didn't work that time. All right, that nonsense notwithstanding. Today, Brian, um, friend Brian had sent in a wee request saying, look, you know, he'd like some uh, pointers with regard to um, doing voiceover work. Um, I've done a small amount of that uh, for the BBC and for uh, a sound post-production house uh, for commercial clients and so forth with advertising agencies. Um, so we'll have a wee look at that in a minute. But um, also, uh, Damien had uh, made a response to uh, <clears throat> yesterday's piece about Pacific Rim being a bit like... Um, Playboy and uh, he said that he had conducted some private sessions in his attic to see if the results were similar um, but uh, that's as far as we got with that particular report um, so Brian let's have a wee think then about um, tips on, on, on voiceover and starting out as a potential voiceover uh, actor so a couple of things to consider here when we think of voiceovers we tend to think of really super macho dudes with really great voices who tell us that um, this man is Arnie's half-brother and half-something else. Okay, and really, you know, those guys have got that kind of side of the market wrapped up. I think that, you know, in my experience working with them, um, um, working in this field, you've got to remember that you're being marketed to clients and... Um, <laughs> We text there. We can, that can wait. You're being marketed to clients, and essentially, you know, they're more likely to say, "Oh, this is Brian, who's got a nice, friendly, mid Ulster accent," and be able to sell you that way, rather than, "Here's Brian. He can do a New York accent. Uh, okay. He can do a London accent. Uh, okay. It's a bit Dick Van Dyke. Here's um, Alan. He can do a really, really poor Italian American accent. He can do a moderate Colombo impression." And he can do, oh, he's, he's actually got quite a nice mid, easy going Northern Irish accent because that's his voice, right? So, you know, be realistic about how you're going to be cast in the same sense as, you, as how you're going to be cast as an actor. You know, if, you, if you're um, leading man material, don't expect to be cast in, in character roles, particularly, and vice versa. If you're 23, don't expect to be cast, you know, as somebody for twi twice your age. And conversely, the case can be um, made as well, unless you're Tom Cruise. So, think essentially what I'm saying here is don't go in trying to do 101 different voices. Go in with some good recordings uh, of, of yourself in a relatively natural voice, uh, and showing that you can read copy well and that you can interpret a script and bring it to life nicely. Secondly, don't make your own recordings when you're setting out to do a showreel. Go and pay the relatively small amount of money that it takes to get your piece recorded properly by a professional. If you can imagine somebody listening to 50 tapes a day, they're only going to listen to the first 15 seconds and that gives them all that they need to know as to whether or not you're commercially viable. Um, so ensure that you have the best proper recording and believe me, the people who are listening to your demo tapes will know instantly whether it's recorded professionally or not. Um, <clears throat> So you'll find that there'll be resources available if you do a Google search on that. You know, uh, I want to record a demo reel uh, as a voiceover artist and, um, and you can negotiate something with those people. So, uh, thirdly, um, get in touch with, with the kind of post houses, sound recording places that you want to work with and ask them for, first of all, uh, let them know that you're really interested. Have a listen to some of the work that they do, and inform them that you've, you know, that, tell them that you've listened to it by saying, "Hey, I really like the, um, the, the the audio work you did on such and such a commercial or on such and such a show." So show that you're interested and informed about what they do, <coughs> and then ask them um, if you if you could come in for a chat and and possibly record um, to be put on their books. 
what you may find will happen is that you can say, look, is there any chance you guys could send me a demo, uh, sorry, a spec script that I can use to record a demo for you so that you can see I can give you a range of different interpretations. Now, don't start, again, when it comes to a range of different interpretations, don't, that doesn't mean 20 different regional accents. That means, um, that means bring the, certain, the key taglines to life with a couple of different inflections and a couple of different speed paces. You don't have to go away, it's all over the place. And pretend you're some cockney rebel because, as you can see just from that there, nobody would ever employ me to do that, okay? Because you've got, you know, 10 million cockney rebels in London. Or just anybody else can do it better, basically, including my dog. So, you know, know your strengths, know your weaknesses, get a spec script, know the people, uh, know the quality of work and the kind of content um, with the people that you want to work for. So again, that comes back to just knowing your target audience. And if you end up having to do it on your own, invest in the best microphone that you possibly can and the best audio post-production um, uh, software. Okay, so uh, um, again, don't be tempted to throw tons and tons of effects on and make your voice sound like you know your your um, Barry White, if if you don't have that sort of voice. Let your own natural inflections come out, but, but with a nice, clean, well modulated um, recording. And um, one other wee thing is when you're when you're getting a mic, get a mic shield as well that um, pre prevents those kind of ex uh, percussive, explosive over-modulations of the microphone on p and b and t. Okay, those are the things that cause your, your mic to peak. So you get a little pop shield, okay? You can either get those um, made professionally or you can jury rig one yourself with a bit of wire and a little bit of um, stocking, actually. Um, we'll go over that fine. So, Brian, I hope that helps. Um, and then it just comes down to giving maybe two or three really nice, good, clean readings with a couple of different inflections and throw in a couple of um, different takes of the key taglines that are likely to be the selling point of your um, of your script. Okay? And um, so speak soon. Guys, thank you very much for your attention. Enjoy the wonderful sunshine. I'm waiting to record the rest of the content for $50 Film School over the next few days. So again, if um, just like Brian suggested, if there's anything that you would like to see, in the actual $50 Film School content itself, um, which is going to be launched very soon, I'm excited to say, um, do give us a shout, let us know, and I'll do my best to um, cover those bases for you. Thanks now, bye.